Since ancient times, people have been trying to predict what will cause the world to end and when. The most prominent predictions have become popular because of Hollywood movies or through religious fright, such as the Mormon belief that the second coming of Jesus Christ will bring about the end of the universe. However, until now, there's not been a purely scientific theory that explains how and when the world will end. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three artificial intelligence breakthroughs and predictions. The MIT Supercomputer Prediction Scientists and mathematicians at the prestigious university, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, have introduced a supercomputer that can make dire predictions about the fate of humanity and the Earth. The computer was developed in 1973 by a computer science commissioner named Jay Forrester. Forrester worked with the Club of Rome to create the computer with a mission in mind. The Club of Rome is an organisation built of great thinkers, scientists and political advocates whose goal is to promote understanding of the global challenges facing humanity and to propose solutions through scientific analysis, communication and advocacy. Alarmingly, the supercomputer predicted that man would face the end of the world in a year as near as 2040. The supercomputer predicted this by tracking variables such as human pollution, depletion of natural resources, abundance of non-renewable resources, quality of life, and more. The tracking started in 1990, when scientists had a good idea of how life was operating in terms of human detriment to the planet. Using these trends in human behaviour, and seeing how this behaviour has a direct effect on the health of Earth and its inhabitants. The computer is able to make statistical predictions on how the Earth will look if these behaviours and tendencies aren't stopped. Climate and environmental activists are increasingly alarmed by this prediction because they're seeing that, so far, many of the variables and predicted trends are coming true. The computer predicted that by 2020, the climate would be in a crucial state and that humans would have to make dramatic change to our way of life at this point in time. Scientists and climate activists suggest that we cut down tremendously on our use of non-renewable resources. There have already been dramatic changes to consumption that have never become popularised before. For example, Millennials and Gen Z are increasingly using renewable and biodegradable materials for their everyday items like toothbrushes, which are now made from bamboo, reusable water bottles and recycled clothing that can be thrifted. There's also a huge amount of young people choosing a vegan diet over a carnivorous diet to sustain the farming industry and cut back on the harmful greenhouse gases that come from the maintenance and killing of livestock. It's crucial that humans start changing their normal behaviours in order to save our species and our planet. Although we don't know everything about the Earth we live on, humans have a responsibility to protect the natural habitat from which we derive. Using sustainable materials isn't as difficult as it might sound. Doing your research into sustainable and recycled products is a small action which will create a great momentum and progress for a better future. Robot Rights and Human Rights There's a great debate over whether robots should be allowed to join normal human society. Now more than ever, the existence of humanly capable robots is a prominent issue in both politics and the general debate of morality. Some are used to self-manage directions, such as a vacuum on a floor, while others look and speak like humans, giving the impression that they are, indeed human, when they're not. Massachusetts Institute of Technology scientist Dr. Kate Darling suggests, just because the robots look like humans when given a silicon face, hair, and facial expression, they still lack the basic motivations that characterize real people as people, such as the ability to feel pain, make choices, and perform self-assessments and possess a sense of morality. Humans learn these things naturally over time, whereas robots are programmed for these things, which is simply a result of another human being doing the coding. The debate of whether a human-looking robot should truly be considered a member of human society came up when Saudi Arabia granted citizenship to a robot named Sophia. The obvious question soon arose, should Sophia have the same rights as a legal citizen? The answer is complicated. 
Some thinkers believe that rights are attributed to people based on our varying levels of capability. For example, a baby is not given the right to vote because it can't harness the intellectualism that it needs to make an informed voting decision. However, older people can vote because the government has decided that humans have the capability for autonomous thinking at the age of 18. However, an issue like voting in a presidential election uses emotional intelligence. Voting one way over the other requires humans to have a belief system which typically centre around emotionally reactive events in a person's life. Events which robots wouldn't have the emotional capability to react to. So should robots be allowed the same rights as humans, even though they lack the necessary empathy and emotional capability to utilise such rights? The other side of the argument is that robots outperform humans in so many areas that they should be actually granted more rights. It's true that robots have the ability to perform extremely complicated tasks in an extremely short time period, such as a calculator can solve a math problem in one second, whereas a human would take several minutes or more. However, the only reason they're able to do this is because they're completely uninterrupted by emotional or mental obstacles. Clearly, there's pros and cons to being an emotionally capable being. The ultimate goal for robots entering society is that they can be programmed to think and feel like humans. In that case, the law will have to change regarding robot rights, because humans will begin to react to them like fellow peers. This means that robots will be naturally discriminated against, abused and mistreated in all realms of life, and there needs to be legal repercussions for those behaviours to protect the well-being of societal members. Where does it begin, and where should it end for robots and their rights? Robots can be deceitful. Growing up, we learn that telling the truth is always better than telling a lie. However, as we get older, we grow to understand that telling a lie in order to protect oneself or the feelings of another might actually be more beneficial than harmful. Scientists ponder the same question of morality when designing robots used for human interaction. Researchers have defined deceit as intentionally omitting or misconveying information with the intent of personal gain. Depending on what the robot is being built for, the engineer might want to allow the robot to learn and practice deceitfulness. For example, if the robot is being used as a pawn in a wartime battle, the robot and the country for which it's fighting would benefit from tricking the opposing side and would in theory win the battle. In other instances, robots are used as companions for adults and children. If a child asked their robotic puppy whether they could have a hug and the puppy said no, the product probably wouldn't sell particularly well. Scientists say the key to controlling robot deception is understanding when and why a robot is choosing to be deceitful and then having the systems in play to deconstruct a seat if it's no longer helpful. However, this can be an extremely difficult task if we want to ultimately create robots that are learning creatures rather than pre-programmed creatures. Tracking the learned behaviours of robots can be extremely difficult, similar to trying to understand why a human chooses a certain behaviour in terms of understanding their past experiences. Clearly, a robot who learns to lie without its engineer specifically engineering this trait can pose a major threat. One of the proposed methods for controlling the robots after they've learned to see is to condition them not to do it. This ancient method of classical conditioning was proven to work on dogs. This was when Ivan Pavlov, a physiologist, first discovered this. Later, famous psychological studies have proven that classical conditioning also works on humans. If scientists can somehow manage to condition lying out of robots by rewarding them with positive stimuli when they tell the truth, and harming them with negative stimuli when they tell a lie, the robot is likely to never deceive again. A recent study showed two robots playing hide-and-seek with one another, except that one robot was trained to deceive while the other was not. The deceitful robot laid a trail of clues for the truthful robot to follow and ultimately find her. However, the deceitful robot intentionally laid the clues in such a way that would lead the truthful robot to a certain location where she wouldn't be. Instead, the deceitful robot took another path after leaving the clues. This proved that a robot is capable of deceiving another being for its own personal gain. 
So what do you make of these intelligent breakthroughs and predictions? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.